everybody, and this is our Contra Local Think Tank, our weekly live time to go through exercises and practice together. If you're new here, let us know in the comments by commenting new. And if you're returning, let us know how many sessions you've been together with us. Love to welcome all you guys back. It's so awesome to see our group is growing. I see, I see everyone's helping each other in the Facebook group, in our academy, in here. A lot of you guys are partnering. If you're not part of an accountability group, I would recommend that you do that. We're going to break into a Zoom group. Uh, sorry, it's not, not a Zoom group, a Zoom room a bit later for us to practice. If you haven't done that before, I think you'll find it's a lot of fun and you'll have a great opportunity to partner with other people because just like with the weight loss program or learning a new language, you can learn from YouTube. You can learn from people like me and other experts, but you need the accountability of other people. Oh, Darlene says she's missed only two. David Brown has gone the most. Absolutely fantastic. All right. Yeah, we're getting great momentum here. Today's episode, I don't want to call it episode because it sounds like you're watching, but today's session in our program, we're going to focus on the power hour. And we call it the power hour, not because it rhymes, but because it is how you generate revenue. You guys want to learn how to close deals? Give me an amen, right? Are you guys maybe anxious or not sure what happens when you get a potential client on the phone and how you're able to ask them for money, how you elicit pain, and how you get to the question of money? You guys want to make money, right? We're here in the local academy because we want to help you grow your agency serving local businesses. And I'm going to give you a foolproof way that doesn't rely upon pressure, doesn't rely upon tricks. It doesn't require you to make promises. A lot of you guys are new and you don't have any clients or maybe you have one or two clients or your clients are random, so you're not able to scale. This is how you're able to get clients in a particular lighthouse, as we call it, your main category, that your niche that you're going after, even if you don't have any clients in that niche. Would you guys like to learn how to do that and practice today how to do that? Let me know what do you think in the comments. If anyone says no, I want to know why are you here. <laughs> yes, please. Yep, Jerry. Yep, Allison, Carlos, all you guys. All right. So I'm going to share my screen. And by the way, when we go through these documents, don't freak out over how many pages there are. We are going to post modified versions of these inside the group and inside the Conquer Local Academy. Give me a yes if you can see my screen. And tell me, what do you see on the screen? You can see me. <laughs> okay. So you'll see modified versions of these. These are things that you could skin for yourself with our help or you know, maybe you have a designer or use Fiverr. So leading up to the power hour, which is the first meeting that you have, you want to make sure everything's set up in the right way. Just like with the golf swing, if you set up everything right to the club and you just swing all the way through, naturally you're going to hit the ball properly or whatever analogy you want. Just like if you're a chef, you're, is it called the mise en place? I don't speak French, right? But everything's set up properly. That means you're going to win. What most people do is they just hop on the phone because of course, oh, let's just hop on the phone, right? Because you want to seem like you're open. Somebody just reached out to you. Maybe you've been cold calling. Maybe you had a referral. So you have this urgency saying, hey, let's just hop on the phone and chat. And that means they don't know who you are. You don't know who they are. So you end up wasting an hour most of the time. And you guys here, how do we say this, Heather? Mise en place, is that how we say it? So a lot of you will just spend, um, and, go ahead. Mise en place. Mise en place. Okay. Did you take French in high school? I did. <laughs> there used to be this, this French place. I'm, I'm, I'm going to butcher it trying to say its name. Whatever. Okay. So you want to have this process in place to properly qualify them and make it sound like you are willing to spend time with them. But it, before you meet with them, you want to make sure we have everything together so that we can have a proper discussion. So in the same way, before you meet the surgeon, or the dentist, they've already gathered your x-rays and you know, the diagnostics and your blood and understanding what your goals are. Plus it's inbound because when pe people come into the emergency room, there's, all, there's clear pain. So you wanna avoid the issue of jumping on the phone and then after spending an hour with somebody, realizing that they're not the right fit because they're too cheap, 
because they're still shopping with all these other people because it's not someone you can serve because there's things that they're looking for that are not within your wheelhouse or just all these different reasons. You don't want to be in that situation because then it devalues your time. It also disrespects you and it disrespects their time. And the clients who will pay you the most money, as you learned from Dr. Glenn two times ago, their time is super valuable and they don't want to just get on the phone with random people. So ironically, the people that are the easiest to get on the phone with are those who actually don't, you don't want. Does that make sense? Okay. Question for everybody here. Where are you in your stage as an agency? Are you brand new and you don't have any clients? Maybe you have several clients and you're working your way up to $10,000 a month or you're above $10,000 a month and now you want to be a seven figure plus agency. Which of those things are you? One, two, or three. Brand new, seven figure plus. All right, that's good. Always love to see you, like wherever you are, you guys know that if you're a pro, what do the pros do? They focus on the fundamentals. Barely over 10K a month. New, one, sub 10. Okay, good. Okay, so you're going to find that this process of the power hour works whether you have no clients or whether you have 10,000 clients because you can train other people to do this. Adam's a freelancer of 10 years working full-time remote brand new agency. And you guys know that this is also how you scale from being a one person show to running an agency. And by the way, if you say you have an agency and you were to go on vacation for a month or whatnot and your agency would die, you don't have an agency. You're a consultant. Amen. An agency is a business and a business is able to run without you having to be there. If you are there, and you need to be there on the client calls, then you are a consultant or you're an employee or you're someone who's paid, who you, you might be really good at it. You, I know some people who are making a million dollars a year, just them because they do high dollar consulting, but you are not an agency. Okay. And there's nothing wrong with being a consultant. If it's just, you know, I don't want to manage people. I don't want to have any processes. I like to just do my thing and coach people on the phone. That's great. But you're not an agency. Okay. You're okay with being a cons consultant says grant and, Richard says, you just have a job. That's right. You could be, be a highly paid job, but you just have a job. <laughs> Mike says, I'm a Connell agency. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're either pregnant or you're not, right? If we strip you away from your business for a month, can it operate? Do you have repeatable processes so that other people can step in and do the call or set up the ads or do the creative or do like whatever the thing, you know, build websites, whatever the thing is that you do. Okay. Let's talk about this power hour roadmap and keep in mind as we're going through this, which of these pieces you're going to have, because in a little bit, we're going to do some role playing and you get a chance to unmute yourself or in the comments, if you want, want to role play with me or role play with each other, we'll take turns being the prospect or being the agency. Okay. Have you done role playing before? Just let me know yes or no. Have you done role playing before? Role playing is a lot of fun, especially if you see someone else in the hot seat, but we're all friends here. So don't be like, Oh my goodness, Dennis just killed that person. I'm glad that wasn't me. Like, don't, don't worry about that. It's, it's a lot of fun, right? You, you guys will learn. This is so key to being able to close deals in a non-pressure sort of way. Okay. So first off, you can see there's eight stages. First, you don't have to have all stages, but ideally you do, because that's how you have a full process. If you're a consultant, you can kind of skip them because you're just happy to get on the phone with people. By the way, if you don't have any clients yet, don't think that you should just eagerly hop on the phone right away, because I'm not saying play hard to get, but that over eagerness may cause you to say yes to clients that you don't want. And closing deals is not the name of the game. Getting the right clients and with the right expectations absolutely is. Number one, you need to have a landing page where people can buy your services and or sign up for this initial consultation. Some people use a Calendly. They use integrations with their Google Calendar. I like to use Infusionsoft where people come in and they straight up go ahead and pay. And so they pay $1,500 to have an hour with me. And they do that before I talk to them. And some people, it used to be years ago, they'd say, well, can we get on the phone and talk for an hour? And then I can decide what, what I want to buy the hour consultation with you. Like, no. Tony Robbins charges a million dollars up front. And I think you get three sessions with him. I'm not Tony Robbins. I'm only $1,500, right? And we have people like Jake Campoli. He's only $200. And 
you know, you might start your thing out $50 and move up to $500, but whatever it is, you have to value your time, right? Don't give away the free consultations. I know you really want to, but don't do that, right? And so when you have a landing page and you set the expectations that say, because, you know, if you want to spend time with, with Adam, Adam's got to wear his white lab coat to show that he's a doctor with a stethoscope and all that kind of stuff. You're showing that you're a professional, your time is valuable. You're not a salesperson. I mean, you are, everyone's a salesperson, but you're presenting yourself as an expert. So to spend expert time before you get to meet with a doctor, I need to collect your goals, content, and targeting, and I need to collect your access checklist. Goals, content, and targeting is a strategy. We have a form for that. Access checklist is getting access to their Google Analytics, their Facebook page, anything that you want to get access to so that you can review the stats instead of talking just hypothetically about what they might want. And you're going to find that these two assets that you have in advance, especially if you make a video saying, hey, I'm so excited to meet with you before, you know, and we can book a time, but prior to the call, we need to have these two things, your strategy assessment so I can understand your goals, content, and targeting and do some homework in advance before we meet and your access checklist so I can understand and diagnose your website and where you're getting traffic and what content's working for you, right? And those two things will allow us to have a powerful time together in our power hour. And if you, if you just need more clients and you want more practice, you could charge like $37 or whatever for your power hour. Obviously, your time's worth more than that. But I don't recommend giving away your time for free unless it's a million-dollar client like it's a Nike. So when Nike wanted us to meet with them, and I knew that they were, well, they're a multi-million, billion dollar. I was willing to fly out to Portland and meet with their executives. But only if you, in rare situations, don't just be giving away your time. Because then all those free clients are having to pay, or I'm sorry, all the, the clients that you do get are having to pay for all that free consulting. So you have to end up raising your prices and then it becomes not a good deal and it's just not fair to your good clients. Okay, yeah, no more free training. Adam says, is there a discovery call where you're mainly just listing and trying to understand the leads challenges? No, unless they're enterprise because you want, and you'll see why in just a moment, but you want to, sh you want to show, you want them to show you that they respect your process. Can you imagine going into a doctor's office and saying, you know what, screw all the intake you have in the emergency room and the nurses and the forms and all that. I'm just going to go talk to that doctor over there. And I want him to come over and I don't want him to do it this way. I want him to use this particular kind of instrument and this kind of x-ray and he's going to do the procedure this way. Like, get out of here, right? You're going to do it our way and you need to respect that. And I'm trained and I'm a certified digital marketer through Conquer Local Academy, right? And this is what I do. What if, what if someone, sometimes the answer is I'm not the right consultant for you. You should talk to my colleague. Yeah, do that. As you grow, you're going to be able to hand it down to other people. As you've seen in our Facebook group, I've been giving away a ton of these clients. They're good clients. They're just ones that, that I just rather give to someone else, right? I want to take the million dollar deals. And the ones that are 10,000 a month or below, I just want to give to you guys. And a lot of you guys would be happy for those deals, right? Why not? It's not like they're bad. If they're bad, then you keep a list of these competitors or people you don't like and you say, ah, I've got just the person for you. And you send them to that person. And that, that frenemy of yours or whatever is happy to receive leads, right? Because who doesn't want to receive leads? And they don't know how to screen either. Yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. All right. So you show there's a clear process. You say, hey, here's, here's the stages. You set their expectations in advance. Once they fill out the form or on the form, you say, this is what we're going to do. Uh, you send them the email confirmation. Hopefully you have that automated. You collect their goals, content, and targeting, which is a three-part form, of course. Access checklist. Quick audit is optional. A quick audit is you run the snapshot report and or you look at their website, you look at their Facebook, and just come up with some quick thoughts about who they are. Ideally, you do it after you collect their goals, content, and targeting. We call it part one, part two, because part one you can do with public data. Like you can run a snapshot report off of just all the information's public. If they give us access, we can also look at things that are messed up inside their ads, for example, or what their top keywords are on Google Analytics or how their call tracking's doing. There's lots of things you can look at and make it more powerful. Then you're able to schedule the time. I like to schedule these things a week out, which seems counterintuitive because you would think, well, 
if someone wants to do business, you should just get on the phone with them right away, right? Because the sooner you, the sooner you get on the phone, because I heard some salespeople say like the leads you respond to within five minutes are the ones that you're most likely to close. And so what they're saying is true, but there's a nuance to that. So your response to them initially needs to be within ideally an hour or two, but getting on the phone with them is not what you want to do in the next few minutes because you want to show that there's a process. You want them to watch your pre-recorded videos and you want them to prepare and take that time with you seriously. Somebody needs to mute out because I can hear them. You can unmute in, in a little bit when you have a question or if you know, something's wrong where you can't hear me, like, you know, let, let me know. Then you have the meeting. And in this meeting, if you've done these steps properly, and it seems like a lot of steps, but really you can go through these steps in a few minutes, or you can have a virtual assistant do it for you, or someone on your operations team do this stuff for you, like a young adult. It's like the dentist is not the one collecting the forms and dealing with the patients in the waiting room and all that. You only see the dentist for five minutes, right? When you go to the office. And meanwhile, they charged you a lot of money, right? So in this power hour meeting, which you should be able to do in 30 minutes, you will not only get the deal, you will get the right deal. These people who get to this stage are qualified. Oh, it looks like Heather's copied the form. See, she's even copied the GCT for goals, content, and targeting. Let's just take a look at what she's got. Here it is, okay, goals, content, targeting. There's lots of ways of setting up forms. Google forms, type forms, all stuff like that. At this point, you should have clearly set what you're doing before, during, and at a meeting. And we're going to talk about meeting protocol in a little bit. Then there's follow-up tasks. Just know, by the way, that if you're doing things right, then on average, your time spent with a client or with a prospect is worth about $50 a minute. So where does that come from? What, why is that? So if you have an existing client and you're spending time with them, that every minute should be worth another $50 in lifetime revenue for you. So if you spend an hour with them here, that should be another $3,000 of revenue if you're doing things right. Because in, in this power hour, you're going through this thing we call metrics analysis action. You're showing them the data, you're walking through with them, what does it mean? And then the action, therefore, this is what we're gonna do in these follow-up tasks. And so logically, they have to agree with you on what's going on. I wanna show you something that I saw that David posted a little bit earlier. So check this out. This was six minutes, but you could certainly do it in one minute. I like to use Soapbox by Wistia, but you can use Loom. You could use, you know, what is it? The uh, video, rec video recorder or whatever tool it is to, to record what you're doing. Let's just play this, a little bit of this, so you can see what's going on. And I'm going to tell you what's going on here. You guys hear this? No, no audio yet. You can't? Okay. Well, actually, his audio is not very good anyway. <laughs> David's going to fix his audio. But you can see what he's doing here. He's going through the six phases of the snapshot report. And I like that he has a whiteboard because you can immediately see that he has some structure to what he's talking about. You follow me? It's not just him talking, right? And he's got some grades down here in the bottom, an F, a D, an A, you know, it all works out to whatever your GPA was, right? You have good classes and bad classes. And the beauty of metrics analysis action, which in the hospital analogy is collecting the vitals, doing the diagnosis, and then having the treatment plan is it's all very logical on what has to happen. So if you're not showing up in the data providers, you're not showing up in Google, you're not responding to negative reviews, you're not doing remarketing, you're not posting on social media, you're, you're, you're doing certain things that right or wrong, or certain stats are out of place, your website loads slow. Like, these are all things that obviously need fixing. So when you go through the snapshot report in the right way, I'm not gonna go through the snapshot report training because there's other stuff inside the Conquer Local Academy on that. Just understand that when you put everything inside a logical structure, the structure of a power hour, of how you respect your time and you take care of clients, the structure of how you do this analysis, the stru you're, what you're doing is you're tapping into their subconscious mind that will naturally want to flow from metrics to the analysis to the action. Yeah, Steven says you can do it with the screen share. I like Soapbox by Wistia because it puts your face in a little bubble in the bottom. You guys know what I'm talking about? In the bottom, you can see the face. If you do just a screen share and they don't see your face, guess what? You have 
the right brain without the left brain, right? You, you, it's like heart and mind. People have to connect with you. They have to see your face and you have to show them something logical. You do both of those, you've won the deal and they will just go for it, whatever it costs, right? Yeah, Vidyard, there's lots of tools. I mean, you could even do the, the whole you know, cell phone thing like this. I often put a, a TV right here behind me. You can see there's a TV, I'll put it on the TV. And, and film that together. There's, there's lots of different ways that you can do this. Okay. Then when people will ask you, this is what we're going to do in the role playing a little bit. People will ask you, so, you know, I've been burned by three other agencies. How do I, I know what's going to work for you? How are you different than all these other people? What's your process? You can say, I have a clear process on how we do things. It's a six phase process. We call the social amplification engine. I even have a book on it and I made it for chiropractors. And you mentioned what your niche is. That's reinforcing your authority. You're reinforcing the logical, this is how we do things. And so there's no logical escape from what you're saying. So he, the reason why we have plumbing is so we want to measure your goals. The reason why we're collecting your goals is we then be, need to be able to have content associated with each of those to be able to diagnose and measure how we're doing. Targeting to know that we have the right customers. All the people in St. Paul, Minnesota. Amplification to get more of what's working well which is remarketing, running ads, right? We have a clear way of doing these things. And you don't need to go through this whole thing that's 169 pages, but enough to show that you have a process and that you could even bring out your book, right? This is one of my favorite things to do. You wanna know how to close deals easily? Your faith and your name and all this, and you say, this is our whole process. And if you're not sure how to do any of this, you, you could definitely go through all the training and get certified just like me, right? And, and that, at that point, if they're a tire kicker and they just want to learn how to do it themselves, because you know, there's some clients where they're like, they want to second guess everything you have, like, here's a training, right? Go for it. Go knock yourself out. But the good clients are going to say, no, 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 I want you to do it, right? Because I do what I do. I'm really good at that. And you do what you do. So when you hear that, you're like, okay, they're going to be a good client. They're going to respect my time because they respect their time. And if they are a personal injury attorney or a dentist or a chiropractor, then they respect their time because their time's worth a lot. And they also have gone to training themselves. They went to medical school. They went to law school. They understand the whole point of getting a certification, how much time it was, and therefore your time is valuable. And like you're tapping into that, right? When you're dealing with local professional service companies, th th this process works especially well the whole point of credentialing and whatnot. If you're dealing with a restaurant or e-com or product selling companies, it's a little bit more difficult because they might not manage their time as well. And often the restaurant is running, you know, kind of raggedy. But you have all this stuff to back up that you have this process. And then along the way, you want to have these diagrams with your face and your name. Just imagine this is your agency's face and name. And you say, hey, as part of what we're doing, we're making sure we're gathering access so that we can track what's going on. And so you're saying to them, I'm a business person and I'm not here just to get more likes and retweets and 10,000 followers on Instagram. We had a call with some of our Vendasta product friends about an hour ago and we looked at some reports that said, oh, this, on Google we had 9,423 impressions. And I said, okay, is that good or bad? Do I care about that? That's like looking at an x-ray or looking at some blood work and you don't know what those numbers mean. Are they, is it, I'm about to die. Is that a healthy number? I don't know, right? Should the patient have to know? Or worse, do you ask the patient, hey, you know, you had 9,432 impressions at a 0.57% click-through rate. Is that, what do you think? I don't know. You're the doctor. Now I'm starting to wonder whether you know what you're doing if you're asking me as the patient, okay? So you need to proactively show what you're doing here. This is why we're collecting this because we are putting content out there and here we have it step by step. This is how you grant us access. This is what we call the access checklist. You can do the same thing through Vendasta or you can do everything manually. I think you'll agree that doing it through Vendasta saves you a bunch of time. But I also think there's something nice about going through it yourself just to see how it works. Because if the client's going to go through it, you should go through it first to understand how these pieces work. Okay, so there's this getting access, right? You know, the onboarding part of clients is something I see almost all agencies stumble with. And you don't get paid extra for spending more time on onboarding. 
you don't get spent, you, you don't get paid extra for hopping with on the phone with them for 10 minutes and walking them through now click here, now click there. Oh, they, you, you gave me the wrong level of access. You have to give me admin access here, or you gave me access to your Facebook profile instead of your business manager or the WordPress developer. He lost the login and like, you, you just don't do that. So have it all documented that way. It's all done. And if you, if you don't have it documented, it goes round and round, even though you might put it, be putting in more service, they're going to think that you don't have your act together. Okay. So have this stuff put together. Oh, Andrew and Simon earlier had this great. Okay, good. Then whether you're executing or whether a virtual assistant or someone else is executing the quick audit, make sure you understand what those particular items are. What are you looking for? Did we collect the goals, content and targeting? Do we make sure the site is not, or is, is, you know, is it missing site wide HTTPS? Does it have the Facebook pixel? Are they using videos? Are they collecting the good testimonials? Are they, and even though you know what these things are, it's important to have a checklist because even you will forget if you've done it many times, if you don't have a checklist for the same reason, surgeons have a, a pre scrub procedure, right? They know exactly what, what they're doing and that way they don't have to think about it. Pilots have a pre flight checklist, even though they're well trained and they flew, you know, F 18s and they've been doing it 20 years. You have a checklist. It doesn't mean that you are non thinking. It doesn't mean that you don't know the stuff. It just, it creates repeatable excellence is what we call that. Especially if you're going to push it off to other people that are doing the work, which I recommend as you start to get more and more clients. Like once you get past 10 clients, you're going to want to have almost all the work pushed off to other people. So you push it off to other people to do it. But just because you have the snapshot report doesn't guarantee that it's going to be amazing. It doesn't mean the tool's not good. It's like saying you have the best golf clubs, but if you don't have to swing a club, then yeah, whatever. I like to create a document that explains what the audio issues. Can you hear me okay? Give me a give me a yes or no. If there's an audio, or is that Steve saying we're hearing okay? okay. All right, good. Let me know at any point in time if anything is confusing. And you, what you have to do is constantly be pre-framing what the next step is. Anytime you are in contact, you always want to be pre-framing what the next steps are. Okay. For example, this is what we do inside a quick audit and we have our VAs put this stuff together. It, we paste in their goals, content and targeting. We show what's working, what isn't working. Most of these items are canned, but you can just, paste in these, these, uh, cause it's the same things you're looking for every time, right? You can pre-record a lot of these pieces. Okay. You don't have to do this entire thing, but just know that that's what you want to have. Okay. If you are at scale, some of you guys are already at seven figures plus, which is great. Then consider how everyone on your team comes together. So on the client side, what can they expect at every step along the way in terms of the forms that they receive, the data you're collecting from them on the VA side, if you have an assistant or virtual assistant or someone else who's helping you like a marketing assistant, what do they need to do? Maybe they set up stuff in task manager or inside base camp. Maybe there's a QA process. Maybe they're collecting data. Maybe they're validating if they're a fit or not. Maybe they're doing scheduling and it's always nice to have someone else do the scheduling. You guys know why? My audio is not very good. Oh, huh. why is that? Cause it looks boss and it looks like you have a team. Even if you can do it yourself. I was hanging out with Ryan Dice who found a digital marketer and he was in Austin. We had, we had dinner at a Mexican restaurant before this whole coronavirus thing. And he told me that he used to come in on other emails because if, if he came in as Ryan Dice, it would kind of change it. Cause it's like, Oh, it's Ryan Dice. He's the founder. Right? So, Sometimes, you know, people come in on other emails just to make it look like, you know, there's a secretary and other, but, but you do want to have other people handle that kind of stuff for you. Right. And there's, there's tools that will handle a lot of that as well, but I'd like to have a personal touch there just cause I think it's better for the same reason. Some people wear watches instead of using their phone, just cause it's a nice touch, right? Even though your iPhone can tell you what time it is. And then there's what you need to do, which is saying, Hey, I'm looking forward to seeing you tomorrow at 10 AM. Here's a zoom link just in case, right? You forgot the follow up pieces, the, you know, as we discussed, here are the steps that we, that we agreed that you need to do and summary of the things we talked about, right? 
all these different items. So when you get to that point, make sure you don't mess up on the items that are before, during, and after. And this is what I see people goof up, even people who are supposed professionals, they goof this stuff up. You would not believe. How many people do you know who come to a meeting and they don't research the client? They don't review, if you have, oh, because they're busy and they, they were running late from this other meeting and then just kind of showed up. Putting in just a few minutes to research on the client is all the difference because then you feel like you know them and they can tell that you gave them the respect of looking them up. Dr. Glenvo talked about this. If you don't have a lot of time, have your VA, your virtual assistant, do all this research and that way you can just glance at the stuff five minutes before and then you're good. That's what I do. I don't have time to spend hours and hours before these calls. Make sure they're properly qualified. This is called BANT, budget authority need timing. Get these reports ready. I like to have these things ready at least 24 hours before. Why? Because it gives the client an opportunity to review these items. It gives you an opportunity to fix things if there's QAs or typos. One of the things that we see that still happens for some reason is the VA or specialist will send out a report and it'll be for XYZ company, but they'll it'll say ABC company. Like literally, I think we've sent stuff to Nike that said, and for Adidas, what we're going to cover is this, this, and this, because we had Adidas and Nike as clients at the same time. I'm like, guys, you, you can't be doing that. I mean, they know that we have both of each, you know, both of them as clients. So Adidas knew that we had Nike as a client, vice versa, because they were both in Portland. And they knew like when Dennis was in Portland, Dennis was going to see Nike and Adidas. Like, why would he fly in just to see only Nike? Of course, he's going to see both of them. But, you know, you want to QA things like that. It, and it's just embarrassing. What does Mike say? Don't spend your one-on-one -on -one time learning new information. If you're spending time collecting that information, you might as well, no offense, just be like a secretary order taker. It's not a good use of your time. My in days, we covered that in episode three. Thank you, Amy. During the meeting, this is an issue that we'll see more with young adults, but they're often on their phone. For some reason, even in physical meetings, like we're in a restaurant, they're on their phone the whole time, which is ridiculous. It's, a, it's disrespectful. B, it means you're not paying attention. Even if they, and they'll insist that they're paying attention, but they're not because they can't remember what happened. So show respect. If you're going to take notes, take notes on paper. So you, do you see this? I take notes on post-it notes. I know it sounds old fashioned, but I think it's going to get into your long-term memory when you actually take notes this way. And then you can manage your post-it notes, which I have on the whiteboard over here. And it's just easier to keep track of, of what's going on. So don't be in your phone. Don't have five tabs open. Don't think that you can multitask because you can't. And it's going to cost you that deal. So I have a friend of mine who's arguably the best person in the world at SEO. I'm not going to tell you his name because no one knows who he is. He's my little secret. He lives in Crystal Lake, which is just outside of Chicago. He sold his business for $100 million a couple of years ago. But he told me... Dennis, when you are, when you're driving down the road with one hand on the wheel and one arm around your wife, you're doing a half-ass job driving and you're doing a half-ass job driving, or caring for your wife, you know, loving your wife. So don't, no, it's not Neil Patel. Neil Patel is nowhere in the top hundred people in SEO. He's definitely one of the best known, but just because you're best known doesn't mean you're also the most authoritative. That's called the talking head principle. A lot of people think that because you're famous, it must mean that you're knowledgeable. That's not necessarily the case. And Neil's been a friend of mine for many years. And he is very knowledgeable, but he is not anywhere near the top in the world of SEO. And the people that you might know, if, you, if I ask you like who you think the best folks are in the world of SEO, they are, the people who are at the very top in knowledge are not anyone that you would know. That's just how it is. They don't go speak. They don't write books. They're just busy making a stupid amount of money doing what they're doing and geeking out. They're engineers and they... They do not like speaking on webinars. I'm one of the, the weird engineers that's actually okay with being on a webinar, even though I don't, I don't like doing it, but I'll do it, right? It's not Bruce Clay either. Although Bruce Clay was the first to get a $10 million annual SEO company. He's the one who actually invented the term search engine optimization 23 years ago, him and Mike Mann. Bruce is, Bruce is a good friend of mine. I, I interviewed him last year on what's going on with Facebook and what he thinks about Facebook and how to search and social work together. If you guys want to see, I'll give you the interview. We haven't released it yet. I'm waiting for the right time to, to put that out there. Okay, before, during, and after. Okay, so we know that's what happens before, during, and after. 
Oh, Rand Fishkin's great. Rand is one of the best empathetic. He's, he's like the Brennan Burchard, if you will, of SEO. Very charismatic, and therefore he can get away with saying ridiculous things. I'll tell you all kinds of stories of me and Rand at some other point. All right. So think about what has to happen before, during, and after any kind of meeting, or when you build a campaign, or when you build a website, or whatever. There's always a before, during, and after. And here are the different stages. If you do not have a checklist like this, just steal ours. Print it out. Put your name on it. Put your logo on it, right? Go through this a bit later. And we go through all the details of what you need to do to make sure this thing's going to work well. And in 30 minutes, well, actually within like two or three minutes, you will, you'll know whether you're going to close that deal. You'll probably even know before you get on the call because you, you typically will have a little bit of back and forth with the client where you're troubleshooting on getting access. You have a question about, you know, some kind of question or you, you know, you make some comment about what they put in their goals, content and targeting. So it's just a natural way to start the right conversation. And at that point, by the time you get on the phone, you already know they're going to, they're going to buy because a you've discovered things that are wrong, that are brain dead, obviously necessary to fix. So you, and you have the, the products necessary, right? For, for the six areas, that we cover in this quick audit, there are products specifically tied to those six areas, could not be any simpler. And B, most importantly, they're in a position where they're ready to buy because they see that you have a process and they know that you know you can, you can do this work and at that point it's an inbound lead. So you're not having to explain who you are or demonstrate authority, you've built authority in at every step of the way. So by then they need to be able to buy from you. Once they have agreed that they want to do this and you submit their orders, you can create what we call a success tracker, which is sort of a parallel to the executive report that you have inside Vendesta. And what happens in this executive report, you summarize what's going on. So you summarize their goals, content, and targeting. You want to hold them accountable to what they said. You said your goal was to get 20 patients per month or to get to $200,000 a month of revenue or to get 12 new garage door leads in this particular market per day or whatever it was, right? And you measure it, you hold them accountable to that, to the goals, content, and targeting. And then you show what it is that you are doing, what you're going to do, and what you need from them. And so that's what we call GSD, getting stuff done. S can also stand for something else, right? We, we keep going through these items. And that way we keep reinforcing these same items. All right, so it's GSD, right? There's three parts. By the way, every time you meet with the client, First, you cover how their stats are, and then you talk about, which is the next logical thing. Well, based on this, you know, this is working or this, is, this isn't working, and therefore, this is what we're going to do next. We're going to test this thing. We're going to kill this thing. We're going to put more money on this thing. We're going to create more content around whatever it is. So we keep refining our goals, content, and targeting, and therefore, we're starting with what are the things that we have done? Because you want to show that you're doing things, not just like you only did something the night before the call, like some college freshman studying the night before the exam, did nothing the whole semester until the night before the exam. Don't be like that, right? You, you show that you did something and you set expectations saying, this is what we're doing next. So that way they know there's something coming, that you're not making stuff up. And then dependencies are things that you need from them. And by the way, if you have dependencies, like they didn't give you access to something, someone didn't get back to you, this is when you are able to resolve this in advance. And if they don't get it resolved in advance, then by the time you get on the call, you ever been on a call where it's like, oh man, I'm not prepared for this client. I hope they don't read me out or ask me all these questions or ask me why my performance isn't like, oh, I'm, I'm sort of like, it's like going to the dentist and you know you're, you haven't been brushing your teeth properly or something. And you, you know, When you take care of these dependencies, then they're in the hot seat. And then they, it's a completely different feeling because they're like, oh, I know you've been asking for me to make this one minute video or about you know, a tour of my office. Or about, like, oh, I've been trying to do it. I'll get it to you next week. And so now, it, now you're, in, you're back on the position of authority, right? And you've, you've tied it back to your process again on what you did, what you're going to do, and what's happening next. Oh, and by the way, I think I skipped these other steps here. There's, yeah, there's your funnel. So you can show you know, how your stats are. There's different ways of visualizing the funnel. I think the easiest way is just taking screenshots out of, Google Analytics, Facebook ads, their CRM, Google ads. I know there's the advertising intelligence product. 
which is awesome inside Vendasta, but there's all sorts of different ways. And, and you can do it manually too. There's, you know, Google data studio, which is free. There's Tableau, there's other tools, by the way, don't waste your time on reporting. Reporting should only take a few minutes. What really matters is that you are clear on what their goals, content and targeting are. You make a, a one or two minute video explaining that to them on an ongoing basis. So this is assuming they're already a client, you know, you, you've, you've moved from the power on a power hour on to showing them how they're doing. And you just keep updating these stats. You have a VA update the stats. And as long as the stats are good, then they don't want to ask questions on the detail of what you're doing. In fact, they're so busy that when you send the report every month or every week, every week, if they're a big client, every month, if they're like, you know, less than a thousand dollars in fees per month, then they're like, okay, yep. Things are good. Numbers look good. Business is up. I don't really need to have a meeting or you have a five minute meeting and ask them how their daughter's doing or, you know, whatever it is. Right. And that's, that's a great situation that creates almost passive income for you. You guys know what I'm talking about. You guys have some clients like that where the money just comes every month. It's nice. And you did the work initially, right? You might, you might've charged them $1,500 a month and they've been paying like that for the last couple of years. But you knew the, if you actually charge them according to the proportion of the work, you would have charged them 20 grand for the first month. And then you would have charged them $200 each month. But because that would just seem ridiculous to charge them 20 grand, you just charge them $1,500 a month. And so it's basically a payment plan, right? You guys do that? Local businesses, they kind of like the payment plan. You don't tell them they're financing, but that's basically what they're doing. Because you guys know that any guys that do PPC or SEO or landing pages or things like that, you know, like all the works in the beginning, like 95% of the works in the beginning, right? So your client retention, Adam's nodding his head, your client retention is absolutely key. That means your setup here in the power hour to turn them into a client, to set the expectations is absolutely key. You screw this up and you've blown that 95% chunk. That's where all the work, that's where your cost is. You blow this, you're going to have a lot of cost and you're not going to retain them over the next however many months that you need to make it break even profitable. For most agencies, if you can't keep that client for 90 days, you're probably losing money on them. Friends like Wilton Hong, who's our funeral home guy, he's, he's the Glen Vaux of funeral homes kind of. His, I think his churn rate is like one or 2%. And that's because they actually die. I think I told you last week, one of his funeral home friends who owns a funeral home died. The irony of that. Oh man, I know the dead jokes. Preach it, says Mitch Mitchell. I said Mitch before. I know it's Mitchell. Okay. All right. So you can see if you want to go further into enterprise, we're going to have a session. I want to say is episode four or five in season two. We're getting close to the end of season one. We're going to talk about how do you deal with enterprise clients that are say more than $10,000 a month or even like million dollar deals. And we'll show you like, here's how you visualize. Here's how you start to assign, assign teams of people. And the reason why we have this here is just if, if you need to, you can flip to these components. But typically what's going to happen is if it's just a local business owner with one location and you just show them a few examples based on your lighthouse, and they see exactly how this works. They see examples of the ads. They see the targeting. They see how things are put together. You've, you've already gotten the deal, right? You don't even have to go this far. All right. What do you guys think about this? Where you have an hour where everything's set up. You're going through the items that are working and not working. You run from metrics to analysis to action. You have everything set up. You charge for that time. You have forms that are set up. Are you guys doing this or would you like to do it? Or are you confused about it? Let me know. And then we will, huh, this is so much, says Renault. It is a lot. But if you want to be a doctor, you're not going to watch YouTube videos on a weekend and start operating, right? I mean, would you let a doctor like that operate on you? I wouldn't. Doing parts of it, like to do more, ready to dig in. Okay, good. So don't feel like you have to know how to do everything. Like people will will glom onto one thing that's like really exciting. Like, oh, this whole funnel thing where you have the different ads and the stages and all that. Like, how do I learn how to do that? Like, okay, I'll show you how to do that. But make sure you understand the key point is that you are, Dean says, never charge for a pre-launch meeting. Guess what happens, Dean, when someone pays you $1,500 for a meeting? Are they more likely to show up? Are they more likely to respect you? Are they more likely to be a high value client? We use the power hour also as a way for qualifying. Now it might, for you, whatever industry you have, maybe that initial amount to show their series is like a couple hundred dollars or it's $50 or it's $10,000, like B2B, obviously that's a lot more. 
So charge some amount that shows that they're serious, but not a lot of money. It should be enough that like, it's not a big deal. And if they're not willing to pay that, it is a red flag that that's probably a tire kicker or someone who's just not going to be a good client. So we call those a nightmare clients. You love the process says Edward. Thank you. Malcolm says I charge for the audit. Yeah, you can charge for the audit. That's why we bundle into the power hour. You could charge them like 39 bucks or whatever for the audit and then just send it to them. But what you want to do is put it as part of a process, meet with them on the phone, schedule 15 minutes or 30 minutes. And then there's so much more power, right? That's why people will pay. Getting access to tools. People really don't view the value in getting access to tools or getting papers printed or something. It's the, it's the expert that is delivering the stuff to the tool. That's right. When you, when you watch one of your favorite movies, you could technically just buy the script and read the script, but you want to see the, right. That's, that's just where really where the power is. Dave Polson, the larger the client, the less they hassle you and the money. Small clients are picky as hell. Yet you guys know that the less they pay you, the more they expect. Is that true? Can I get an amen on that? You guys know that's true, right? So guess what? Yeah, that's right, Bill, Dan, Aaron. So guess what happens to a, a client that pays you zero, right? Because you know, the less they pay you, the more they expect. What happens with who pays you zero? They have the highest expectation. So we call those entrepreneurs, or the worst word is don't get mad at me. We call them free tarts. I used that word. <laughs> I used that word 20 years ago, and it's gonna. I sort of like using that word. I don't use it publicly, although I, I guess I just did. But the more they pay you, the better of a client they are. Just trust me on that. So it, you're gonna find that when, like, you might think, oh, if I'm charging before we initially meet, they might get mad. Good. That means they don't respect your time. And you're gonna get such a better quality of client. The relationship's gonna be better. It shows that they respect your process. All these differences. Okay. Robert says, I think that could happen with high paying clients as well. They can sometimes be overly titled. Sure. But if they're paying initially and you set expectations in advance on what your process is, there's just no way around it because they have to hold themselves logically consistent. If they only $500 to the name that $500 expect everything says Mike, that's absolutely true. Okay. So we have 10 minutes left. How about Andrew? We're going to break into zoom rooms. Actually, no, no, wait, uh, sorry. I missed one piece. Uh, let's do some role playing. So who wants to role play with me? Put your name or just mention it in the comments, raise your hand or, you know, put your thing in the comments and I'll show you how to close the deal and how to walk through goals, content and targeting or how to qualify people and get the pain to where they're ready to buy. And who wants to, uh, Andrew, pick somebody. And then I'm going to stop the share here. And then we're going to go into the Zoom room and you guys can practice among yourselves. This is a great exercise. You want to do this in your accountability groups. So you want to go to the gallery view in the top right so we can see everyone's face and then move back to the speaker view. Absolutely. Right, so yeah. So I know Rena has been really active. Um, and Rena, I would love to, uh, if you're up for it, do some role playing here with Dennis. Oh my gosh, I'd love to. Hi, Rena. So tell me. Tell everybody about your lighthouse. Uh, I decided to focus on general contractors because I speak their language. They're easy for me to work with. My husband's a general contractor and I know how their schedules operate and they don't have time to do digital marketing. Okay, good. So now we're going to role play and I will be, uh, which one do you want to be? Do you want to be the general contractor or be the agency or which one? We'll take turns. Uh, I, I'll be the general you be the, contractor. You, you, you be the agency. I'll be the agency. I'll be the, and then we'll split. Okay. Okay. So, Rena, I heard from my other friend who's a general contractor that you guys are really good at digital marketing. And frankly, I'm just good at hiring other people, you know, like roofers and plumbers and whatnot to work on houses. I don't know the first thing about social media and about websites and this digital marketing thing. I've gone through a couple other consultants and I have no idea whether they are just ripping me off or not, but I heard you can help tell me what do I need to know and what do I need to do? Well, Dennis, the first thing we can do is take a look at the overall digital health of your business and see if you have all of the key pieces in place to create a larger digital footprint. Um, okay. 
So, so what is that? What is that? See, I like talk to me like a five year old. What is a digital footprint? Is that like something I get from Nike? <laughs> Not from Nike. It's on the internet. Uh, and it's just a matter of checking out your SEO, seeing if you have content, articles, your website, if you're doing remarketing, Google app, all of those things leave a digital footprint. Okay. So what do these things cost and how long does it take? Can so you give me a quote? I can, I, why don't we take a look at what it is that you currently have going on in your business and the areas that we can improve upon. Um, we could get started with a digital audit, which is 297. And okay. we can go over all of the different steps, that, or all of the different things in your business that are currently working for you versus the things that are not working for you. And I can make some recommendations based on that, on what I can do for you in order to help you, help you capture more of the local market. So I'm paying 297 just for an audit that you're not going to fix anything for me? Or how, like, how do I know what it's going to cost me to actually fix it? That's what I want to know. Well, we don't know what the problem is first. So we need to take a look and see the areas where you actually need improvement. And my time's worth a lot. I'm going to help you increase your SEO, collect reviews from past and current clients. We're going to make a mark on the local market out here. But I need to be able to see what areas you need improvement in first. Uh, so let's say you do some of those fixes. What does it cost on an ongoing basis for you to do the work? I want to make, I want to make sure I can afford you. The package, we have a package which is starting at around $1,000, but it just depends mostly on if you need content, if you need news releases, if you need me to manage your social media and do four posts a week with special imagery. This will also include your local citations. I mean, there are a bunch of different services that I can provide for you to help you leave an impact in this local market. But I don't even know what you need at the moment or what areas that you need improvement on. You know, there's some guy who told me yesterday that he could help me rank number one on Google for only $100 a month. What do you think of that? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Did he ask you any questions about your business or just throw that out there? Oh, well, he, he said from his Gmail account that had lots of numbers and letters in it that he was world class and he had a team of 130 engineers and SEO experts, but he couldn't tell me because it was proprietary. That's, that's, that's great. I, uh, I have, I wouldn't even know what to say about that mostly because I don't do business with those types of people. <laughs> So I get a dozen of those a day as well from people who have no credibility. Yeah. So you came rec recommended by a friend of mine, but just, you know, as part of due diligence, how do I know that you're good at all these things? Well, I do have proof of concept. I've been working with other general contractors, roofers, and people in the service industries. And I have a couple of reviews that they've left for me and you're more than welcome if we decide to move forward and you like what we're looking at to contact a few of my references and there you go. Proof is in the pudding, my friend. Great job, Rena. You get an A. Everyone give her a hand. Isn't she awesome? I'm sweating. She's great. She did a great job. Oh so, so why were you sweating? Were you nervous? Well, when Andrew called my name, like my heart rate spiked. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, he called me. You did, you did great, Rena. You were fantastic. fantastic. Yeah. So I was a me. Who who else wants to try? Let's try someone else. You get an A. That is really you did a great job. And I'm just saying, I'm not just saying that you did a fantastic job. Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate the compliments. You've been working hard. I can tell. Okay. Well, the next the next person to pop their name in was was Heather. I just saw I saw it just now. Heather, do you want to do you want to do a role play with Dennis? Yeah, I'm scared, but I'll do it. Okay. So tell us about your lighthouse, Heather. Uh, yeah, so my lighthouse is, I guess you would call them coaches who also have masterminds. I'm really drawn to masterminds. Okay. Now, do you want to be the coach or do you want to be the agency? I'll be the coach. Yeah, I'm used to hearing all their struggles. Okay, good. Come at me. Okay. Uh, Dennis, 
I've already hired, you know, marketer after marketer. We're trying to get butts and seats at our mastermind. And uh, I just don't know who to trust anymore. You two came highly recommended. So I'm wondering if you've got the stuff to help us get some results. We're spending a lot of marketing. So it could be a marketing failure, it could be a process failure. But Heather, I want to first understand what is it that draws people to your mastermind and your coaching? Because whatever's working, I want to amplify it. And I need to have that clear signal. So help me understand what is that clear signal? Why do people come to you? I think they hear about it, the word on the street, especially since we, um, if you want to say retired dentists who have moved on to do real estate investing and you know we all know each other just like other industries they know each other and so they talk so there's a lot of word of mouth so we know that word of mouth works if there's a way to amplify word of mouth that sounds awesome um but we just we were hoping that we might be able to amplify some results through digital marketing but we have struggled we've been struggling to get results through marketing for people that we don't know there's plenty of other dentists out there and real estate investors out there how do we bring them in yeah Yeah. Well, imagine if there's other real estate investors and dentists and they're looking at you and they don't know who you are. Heather, I took a quick look at your site and I took a look at your social media properties. And while you are putting out some valuable content here and there on BizFizz, I noticed that there's, you're not really leveraging, amplifying those relationships. You said that your word of mouth is what drives what's going on here, but you're not really leveraging it. And it looks like you're not running ads to be able to target and, and, help other dentists and real estate agents see that. Tell me, why aren't you doing that? Hmm. I think that's a, the healthy question to be asking because I don't have an answer and I don't like that as a and, dentist. <laughs> and when you hired other marketers to do this promotion to get people to your masterminds, have they figured out first what the seed is that causes people to go to you versus how many other coaches are there, Heather, that you're competing against? Oh, there, there's plenty more, you know, masterminds there, they're popping up all the time. And some people are even using the word mastermind and it's not even one. So now it's a diluted market and it's really hard to define for the, the public, if you want to say. And so the way you stand out is through your proof because you're the real deal. And there's a lot of fraudulent masterminds, like you mentioned. What I want to do next is collect that seed because I don't want to take on any client. Our client roster is already full and we're very picky. But if you have the necessary ingredients to be successful, we're willing to take you on. But you, if you don't, and if you don't honor our process, then we don't want to take your money. Is that fair? Very fair. Yeah. Okay. So our next step is we're going to collect your strategy assessment, your goals, content, and targeting. I want you to take your time sit down for an hour or two, fill it out as completely as you can because my team's going to come in and analyze it. We're going to find what that signal is that's working well for you. And when we know what those dentists and real estate agents are doing, what those specific words are that their colleagues are saying, because you said they all know one another, right? what they're saying, their testimonials, their video, uh, are you comfortable interviewing your past clients or current clients to get their feedback? Absolutely. Okay. Are you comfortable knowing that the investment in word of mouth doesn't drive immediate leads. Absolutely. It's already been months. So are you comfortable investing in things like digital plumbing so we can get your tracking in place? Uh, Certainly. If you're saying this is what's going to align it and make it work, it's worth it. Okay. So I want you to go through our strategy assessment. When you're done with that, you can also optionally go through the access checklist so we can analyze what's going on in your CRM, in your Infusionsoft on your website. And that week we, we can make real recommendations based on your data. We're going to take those items together, do some analysis, and then schedule a time for a call. That analysis we're selling for $1,500. Is that something that you're open to investing in? Well, since I've heard that you bring results, I guess that is absolutely worth it. And what do you charge for a mastermind? Uh, Depends on the tier, so anywhere from 20000 to 80000 a year. So if, if we were to get you one more client through this program, an incremental $20,000, and you spent $1,500 on the audit, and we did a few more things, and let's just say that was another ten grand, would that be a good ROI? Totally, my goodness gracious. So now you know who's a real marketing consultant or not. They've got a clear process. 
on how they operate. And they're working with your goals, content, and targeting. They have tools and expertise, but they also have to start with what makes you special. So Heather, mm -hmm. I'm glad you reached out. And I want to make you a shiny example among all the other coaches too. My assistant's going to reach out to you to schedule a time. <laughs> Sweet okay. deal. Thanks. All right. Take okay. all my money. Yep. All right. Good job, Heather. What do you guys think? Way to go, Heather. So many different ones. Now, I know we're at the top of the hour. Do you guys want to keep going with this? I know we, we tend to go like 80 minutes or 90 minutes. Okay. Do you, do you want to try another example, maybe? Do one more, and then we'll go into our Zoom room. Heather's great. Yeah. Thanks, and I appreciate you yeah, demonstrating let's do how someone else. the professional does it to, if, you want to do a, if you want to do a role play, just pop, pop your name in the chat there. Brendan, I, hear you, I saw you say me. Brendan Thomas, where are you at? Brendan, all right. I'm right here. Right on. There you are. Thanks for volunteering. Like the color, the color of your background. That's nice. I appreciate that, Dennis. I wonder where I got that from. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the plants yeah everything I, I see brendan stuff every time it's getting better i love seeing that yep i got a good mentor who keeps pushing me so i'm lucky <laughs> all right brendan tell everybody about your lighthouse oh so my lighthouse since i'm an insurance license agent um i um it's going to be insurance agents and agencies such as you know state farms and all states and so forth okay do you want to be the agent or do you want to be the uh, agency? Um, hmm. I'll be the agent. I'd love to see how you would handle um, an insurance client. Okay. So, Brendan, I'm a State Farm agent in Torrance, California. And, you know, the last few months have been kind of hard because – we were right next to the Del Amo Mall and we had great traffic and we had great referrals and all that. But, you know, because of coronavirus and, and all the things have been really, really hard. And I've been seeing some of the posts that you've been making on Facebook and LinkedIn about how you're an insurance agent and you've been able to drive leads. Can you tell me more about that? Well, the first thing that, you know, we have to take a look at is exactly what your social presence and and other factors that you have going on right now. Are you doing much social media? Are you doing email? What, what are you doing right now? So I have one girl in the office and she manages my social media. But frankly, you know, I'm, I think I'm too old for this social media thing because I don't understand Snapchat and Instagram. And, you know, we're here just to sell policies, you know, auto insurance and homeowners insurance and accidental death and dismemberment. And just being there when people, you know, like a good neighbor state farm is there and i've i'm just an old-fashioned agent and i've been working through relationships and referrals so the social media thing i just feel sort of uncomfortable to me because i don't do like TikTok and dancing and singing and things like that but it, i mean did, is, is that something that i need to do like that doesn't feel like something i would do well no, it's not something that you necessarily need to do but it is um it is beneficial for your business if you have some type of social presence currently have a website that you're pushing traffic to or or is everything just word of mouth well state farm gave me a website like all the other agents but frankly i have no idea what's going on there i mean you, you can log in there and you can see like my picture because right? i have a professional headshot and see some things about me but really i look like any other insurance agent out there okay well the first step in the process would be to go over your plumbing and tracking so will we be able to get access to the back end of, of that State Farm website um, to, to place pixels and so forth there so that we can see what's working and what's not working? Well, I don't even know what a pixel is. I mean, is, is, that, is that like dangerous? Oh, no, it's not dangerous. Very helpful. Um, but pretty much what that is, is um, it's a pixel that helps to keep track of, you know, the people who are or the prospects that are going to your site and also helps you to remarket them as well. So we definitely want to have that set up. And that is actually one of the first steps, if not the first step in our six step process called social amplification um, engine. Well, one of my, so, you know, one of the folks in the, in the office told me that we're not getting much traffic to the website. And it seems like most of the new clients we get are referrals and they're through the phones. So do, do you think the website really could work for us? 
Yes, I think it'll get you additional clients and help you to be more efficient. And again, give you that social presence that'll get, you know, the people who are not word of mouth, let's say the younger crowd. A lot of the younger crowd are on social media. So you definitely would want to go ahead and, and make sure you have an imprint there so that you're able to take advantage of that demographic of customers or clients. Okay. So if I hire you, Brendan, given that I don't know anything about social media and SEO and pixels, what do you charge? Well, first we'll do, um, we'll charge an ass assessment as far as to do your audit, see exactly what it is you need or don't need. And then we would move forward on a month to month basis um, as far as a retainer is concerned um, so that we can help you moving forward and we could actually see the month by month progress. So my agency's hurting right now and I just need a lot more, you know, a lot of people aren't paying their premiums just, you know, they're not paying their rent as well. Do you think that you can get me back to where I was pre coronavirus in the next month? 30 days. Um, I mean, I really don't like to put a time frame on when we can get you there because we want to make sure that everything is in place, your goals, your content, your targeting so that we can start making headway. So, I really don't like to put a time frame. And remember, I'm an insurance agent as well, and I was doing it on a call center basis. And I used to love the word ASAP. I need leads ASAP, I need clients ASAP, but there wasn't there wasn't any repeatable excellence, and that's what we're shooting for. So I'm pretty yeah. sure if I told you that I can get you more clients and keep them on the books longer, um, with, is that something that you would have patience for? I guess it depends on what I'm going to get, right? Like, can you guarantee that I'm going to get more customers? I mean, cash is really tight. I mean, I've got the Valpac guy saying that if I do direct mail with them, you know, the postcards, that, that would drive me more business. I have these other people saying they do Google ads. I have these other people, you know, wanting to do billboards. And I don't have money to put in all these other areas. I, I don't know where to put the money because everyone's telling me that I just need to put money in and hope that it works. Well, and that's understandable, but, you know, we have um, certain processes that we do is probably as low as maybe $9 a day because we want to build out your funnel and start getting the traffic going. So it's not anything that's going to be, you know, extravagantly expensive to start, but it definitely is going to cost some money to move forward. Well, how do I know what's going to work? I mean, do I have to wait three months? Again, we have a guaranteed six-step process. Well, not guaranteed, but we have a, a process that has been working for a lot of other different industries um, where we focus on six steps and we also meter your progress as we go along. Okay. Well, so what are you looking for to tell whether I'll be successful in your program? Well, again, I'm an insurance agent and unfortunately, um, when I first got in, I was, again, I wanted the, the ASAP. I wanted everything to happen right away. But um, since taking a look at this program and, and this set of strategy and methodology, um, this is, to me, what would be the best fit for you moving forward. Because, again, it is something that's going to hold you accountable as we move forward. And, again, the most important thing is the ROAS, which is return of ad spend. Um, so we want to make sure that you're making money as well. What does this require of me to do? Because I'm really busy. I don't have a lot of time to be hanging out on social media. Well, the good thing about dealing with some, someone like myself is you won't really have to do much other than sit down and take a look at your goals, content, and targeting in the beginning. We go over that assessment, and then you could kind of leave everything to me as far as moving forward and helping you. Now, you do have to create content. That is part of uh, what we'll be doing. Um, but outside of that, um, I pretty much can handle everything on my own along with my team. Okay. So what do you guys think? I see some feedback here. So I'm an unqualified client. I or I'm a prospect. I'm not someone you want to take on. Why is that? And, you know, it did cross my mind that because, you know, you always say you kind of have to leave the pains in the butt alone. So Yeah. Yeah. So you could... You could say there's different ways to give a polite decline or to see whether they're really serious. And you could say, you know, we're not a fit for everybody because this, this is not something where you just pay us money. We partner with you to be able to get you more customers based on the customers that, that already love you. Without that, without those necessary ingredients, our program can't work. 
And we need to be able to invest together. Businesses that are struggling, unfortunately, it's often hard for them to make this kind of investment, which isn't going to give you those immediate leads. Because what it is, is it's a structured word of mouth program. That's what the social amplification engine is. And I'm happy to you know, ask you questions about how the process works. I'm happy to give you a copy of my book where we walk through step-by-step step how we do it for other insurance agents and other professional service sellers, right? Because now relationships are what count, whether they're being seen online or it's referrals, and we've got to activate your current happy clients and why they do business with you instead of through Geico where they can you know, save 15% in five minutes or less or whatever it is, right? Okay, no money, no credit, hit the road, lay out the expectations, right? You've got to do things to set the expectations. You need a little bit more, I guess, being comfortable talking to these leads. Because I, I could sense your tension. And part of it could be that, you know, we have 100 people here that are watching and there's, there's pressure when you're doing role playing. But more role playing with other people and you'll get more comfortable. And more importantly, you're going to be able to take the right client. So even if you closed me, that would have been bad. You guys see that? understand let them just because you want to show that you're an expert you're not a salesperson trying to get any person to do business got you okay tim says i'm judging now <laughs> all right so last exercise let's go into zoom rooms for 10 minutes and you guys are going to practice role playing and then give each other positive feedback critiques right constructive criticism don't just bash people even if they suck at speaking we all suck let's do that for 10 minutes and then i'm going to give you a cool exercise next Okay. What do you say, Mr. Andrew? We'll see you guys in the Zoom. You, you want to do these exercises. Don't just take off. This is a good, this is how we, we get better. If you have to leave, that's fine. You can watch the replay. Sorry, I was <laughs> muted there. All right, guys. Uh, get the room set up. Here we go. Creating rooms now. Get ready to join. There we go. Awesome, you may need to accept the join room invitation. Steve. Can you guys hear me? Yes, hey, I can hear you. Oh, hey, Steve. Hi, hi Renell. I the room that I was in. <laughs> I just left the room. Nobody else in there? Actually, he wasn't on meeting. Ah. Uh, I had gotcha. two people in my room, but neither were on camera and neither one unmuted, so. I can go on camera, but my, my lighting is terrible. So. <laughs> Well, it's it's totally up to you. It's your call. It's hey, it's great to see you. <laughs> hey guys, we can uh, we can role play here, right? This this could be our room here. Some people might might jump back if people aren't joining their rooms, but you know we do our best. So, hey, uh, am I pronouncing that right, Renell? Renelli. Renelli. How about uh, you and Steve do some role playing here? Are you guys hey. up for it? Yeah. So who wants getting, to who are you wants getting too to much be feedback? The... Uh, my are you daughter's getting feedback from me. My daughter's practicing drums. Can you guys hear me? <laughs> yeah, I can hear her. <laughs> I can hear you too. Okay. Well, what what's your lighthouse, uh, Ronelli? Um. Well, I'm just about to make a switch because I was one of those that was selling to everybody and anybody just trying to do business and my field was actually in wealth management so i'm going to try to go towards the private banks excellent that's good carlos what's your lighthouse buddy 
unmute. Uh, am I muted? Can you hear me? Yeah, I got you there, Carlos. You're unmuted. All right. Um, so I kind of have three main ones. Uh, one, because my wife is a medical doctor, so that's kind of an easy, easy vertical there and by, by association. Um, I'm, I'm also trying to help out a lot of people that have not been online before. So I would like I, the kind of situation that I would call a micro business. You know, it's like an SMB of one person for the most part, maybe have never been online. Uh, and then uh, the one that I really would like to be in is what they call destination marketing organizations or DMOs. Uh, and that's basically when you're uh, trying to uh, market or, or work with people like, let's say municipalities or uh, cities or, you know, bigger um, organizations that pull monies together to advertise uh, basically more, more or less uh, concentrate on tourism and, and that, that, that's, that's sort of like the dream job because who wouldn't want to go travel the world and do that, right? <laughs> and work at the same time. So that, that's, that's the, you know, that's the dream job or the dream client, I should say. Cool. Good. Uh, Ronelli, so you I, I got disconnected gonna... a few seconds ago. My laptop died. So that's oh, okay. So Ronelli, you said you're going to be focusing on small banks now? Yeah, um, I can rather do private banks and registered agents, that kind of thing. Okay. All right, great. Well, why don't, uh, why don't uh, you want to be the agency and I'll be the banker? Yes. Okay. I, right. Go ahead. So, hey, uh, Ronelli, I, I'm so glad we were able to meet. I, uh, I don't have much time. I've got uh, my next meeting coming up uh, pretty soon, but... Uh, just quickly, I mean, you know, uh, how much do you guys cost and, you know, how many more uh, people can you drive in here? Um, for cost, I can't relatively say a cost right now simply because everyone's situation is much different. And I would think it's best that I can do a DNA research on what your site might need or what your um, diagnose your, your issue before I can just jump into cost. So I don't give you no cost that might not be relevant. Okay. Okay. Well, uh, well, what, what kind of information are you going to need? I don't know if I, I, I mean, I can have my assistant give it to you, but I mean, like, uh, you know, you're not going to need any passwords or anything like that, are you? <laughs> no, I would simply just run a diagnostic on your um, website simply because I need to know um, what traffic you're doing. I know your business. I understand what your pain, pain is. And I know um, some of the issues that you might have faced during, um, even this COVID-19 time, and I need to be able to offer you exactly what um, we need. So I'll simply just run you a snapshot and give you a further call so that we can discuss on that. Okay. Well, I know, uh, I know, I know in my business uh, what most people need right away. But what is it that you think I need right away? I mean, I know you haven't done an analysis, but what's the areas you're going to be looking at first? Okay, basically, we're, um, as you are in the private banking industry and um, you don't want to just have any, we more deal with the higher end clients and in order to get that done, we don't deal directly with the clients. I need to be able to get into the accounting firms and the lawyers and those professional firms to be able to communicate to them and see um, where your clients are, what demographics you're doing business. And so, um, like, again, I said, the snapshot report, I have to go through there and see um, what, your, what your website and everything else is communicating to not even the clients, but those professionals. Okay, great. Well, uh, what kind of turnaround are we looking on? If I say yes, I mean, what, uh, you know, how quickly can I see results? Um, results in terms of getting clients takes time, but um, what we would have to do is let's give it a few more days. Uh, I'll give you some time so that you can get a few information on what you might be able, what you need to communicate additionally to your clients. After I see your snapshot report, I go over that with you. And then um, I can make you a few recommendations. It takes time. I'm not going to give you a deadline date, so to say, because um, you're looking for results and results again, um, it's based on client needs and where we're standing. 
Okay, great. Well, I'll tell you what, if you can send over a few more references, um, because I'd like to see your work, um, and then uh, maybe we can set a time. Uh, ha uh, is there a cost for this initial snapshot? Uh, well, snapshot would be about $49, and it's very relatively cheap, but it's quite handy. It's full of information, and with that information, um, I'm sure you're going to be agreed to see the additional stuff that we can offer. So excellent. Okay. I'll, I'll put you in touch with Sarah and you guys can work out the details. Thanks. All right. Thank you so much. Good job, Ronelli. That was great, Ronelli. I mean, on the spot role playing, that's not easy, is it? Yeah. Not, not at all. So, um, so some things just as somebody, you know, listening in from the outside here, um, you know, definitely, you know, having that process like, uh, you know, like Dennis has brought up, having that process can help identify what those steps are. And I really like his line that he had earlier, you know, always hinting at what that next step is, you know, and, and that's going to come with time, which is great. I love how you talked to the snapshot report. And, uh, you know, you can, um, you know, we, our, our engineers have worked on it so hard and provide so much important information. You know, our, our C, um, CCO, George Leith, on one of our community sessions, he says, you know, this should be like a $500 report, right? And, it, and we, get, we get it for two bucks. You know, we worked really hard to get all that information available. And, uh, you know, we did release uh, the Snapshot Ninja course in the academy this week. So, you know, as a next step, you know, from this role-playing, Ronelli, uh, maybe you want to check that out. And... Uh, and, and that'll, that'll really, really strengthen that, that snapshot report talk track. Definitely. Nice. What did you think, Steve? How was it being the banker? I liked it. I mean, just from a verbiage standpoint, I mean, I'd be careful mentioning uh, it's cheap, you know, the snapshot price. Uh, let me determine what's expensive, but you can determine what brings a lot of value. So you can say, hey, it's only $49. That's a tremendous value, uh, you know, and, uh, we're just basically doing it just to start the the, pro, the relational process and to make sure that we we're both invested you know so uh, you can talk about value just don't talk about cheap or expensive in my opinion as a business owner okay but I, I thought you did a good job talking about how um, it's not just about getting the customers now it's about building uh, you know building the system out and um, it's not about uh, um, immediate returns but it's about overall returns I thought it was good that you talked about knowing the business. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I mean, I thought you did a really good job, especially for on the spot. That was fantastic. Anyone else <laughs> as a feedback? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that was great. Well, happy to have you in the think tanks, Ronelli. Um, Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Are you a partner of Vendastas yet? Yes, I am. Nice. About, fantastic. Uh, two months now. Yeah. Awesome. And have you checked out the academy? Yes, I did. Right on. Yeah, so that uh, Snapshot Ninja Academy uh, course is in there this week. So if you haven't seen that, definitely you know, give that a go. Definitely. Thank you. How was everyone else's um, uh, role playing? I saw a few people jump in here. George, did you get to role play with anybody in your breakout room? No? How about uh, Wendy or Richard? You guys jump jump back a little bit. Did you guys get to role play at all? I had no one in my room. Ah, oh, shucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we do our best to get everybody to engage in the breakout rooms, and yeah, you know, so either they're very shy or they <laughs> they had walked away. Yeah. Hey, why don't we do? You know, I expect um, Dennis to pop in here in a little bit, and then we'll pull everybody back, but. I always like going around the room and just asking what everybody's lighthouse is. I, I think it's always a good exercise to, to be uh, working on the, and understanding your lighthouse. So Richard, what's your lighthouse client? Uh, my lighthouse has been in the health sector. Uh, that's where most of my clients are. I'm, <coughs> uh, I'm just new to Vendesta. I'm only about six months in. So I'm debating on whether I want to switch, switch my lighthouse. Because from a marketing standpoint, uh, the healthcare is, uh, uh, you don't get uh, people doing a lot of testimonials for uh, mental health. 
services, so it's pretty hard to push that the segment. So, so I'm thinking maybe I want to switch to restaurants that could be used, find it more useful. Nice. How about uh, how about yourself, Wendy? Well, we um, we focus on uh, local businesses, medium to large businesses, um, and really we work across many different genres. Uh, but really the focus is the one-on-one -on -one attention, the one-on-one -on -one interaction um, with our local businesses. Nice. So maybe focusing on a strength or a, or a sales process or a service rather than a specific niche? Right. Gotcha. Because you're getting tested, you know. Yikes. But there we go, <laughs> bringing everybody back. Sorry if I cut the rooms uh, short, everybody. I'm sure there are some great conversations happening. That was epic. Right. Thank you. You cut nice. me off, Andrew. Thanks a lot. Oh, oh man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Ryan. No, it's cool. All I right. was providing <laughs> tremendous value, man. <laughs> so hey. much value. Hey, uh, Dennis, this is not easy. This was hard, man. It is hard. But it's just how you get better, right? Yeah, I know. But um, hey, I mean, well, even though I know what my lighthouse is, you know, uh, it's still not easy if, if you haven't uh, done it before. Yeah. So, Kosi, you have other folks that were in your Zoom room. Are they your accountability partners? Have you guys exchanged information so you can practice again during the week? I'm going to do, uh, I'll do that this week. I'll get with uh, someone this week so we, we actually can practice a lot. Yeah. So, everyone here, you must... This, this role-playing is hard. It is hard. But guess what? Very Singari, this is the difference between closing a deal and not closing a deal. Do you guys see how important this is? Mm -hmm. This is like watching football on TV versus like actually learning how to throw the football and learning how to run and do plays. If does anyone, if you're, if you don't have an accountability partner, talk to the other people that were in that Zoom group or put, put it in the comments here in the chat here saying I need an accountability partner, and just pair up right now. Now is a great time because you need to get this practice. Look, you can do all the studying in the world. I see some people, I won't name them, but one of my friends has gone to all these different expert groups and, and bought all the courses from all the gurus, goes to all the conferences, and she still hasn't done these exercises. And I'm saying, you're not going to grow your business unless you do these exercises. I know it's uncomfortable. You, you, you have to do this. You have to make your one-minute videos. You have to learn how to role play. Because you're, you can't time exactly when that next prox, prospect's going to say, hey, I heard about you from my buddy Ryan Mason. Can you help me with my digital marketing? And if, you're not, if you haven't practiced enough and then you get on the phone with them and you stutter through that meeting and you miss that deal, that's, that's just painful, mm -hmm. right? Okay, is, is, that, is anyone here stuck or doesn't have a partner? Now is when you want to partner up. Um, and then Facebook in the US? It, you can partner with anybody as long as you guys can agree on a set time that you meet in the same way that you know we meet here on Friday. I would choose another time like Tuesday or Wednesday when you guys have your set time and honor that time just like a client meeting time. And you hold yourself accountable to the exercises. And we're going to talk about certification hopefully next week so you guys can all become cert CDMA, Certified Digital Marketing Agencies. I want to see you guys do that. And then you get a badge and all that stuff. I would love to, to, to do that. Uh, I think maybe it's going to be the week after. Next week, we're going to talk about dollar a day. It'll be the week after that. Me? I need a partner. I'm so lonely. <laughs> um, anyone in the time. U.S.? Anyone in the U.S.? I need, well, anyone. I need, I need a partner. Anyone who has Give an internet see, connection. Yeah? Who? Sigari. Uh, <laughs> you too. Hey, you too, partner. Hey, where are you at, man? Hey, maybe All we'll right. uh, maybe we'll pop yeah. in that that link, uh, anchor yeah. Devin. I don't know if you guys are on the line with the link to the Facebook group. There we go. Yeah. Devin just group. popped that Facebook group in the in the chat there. So make sure to get in there um, and connect with somebody. You know, I think it having that accountability partner um, is fantastic. So connect with somebody, do the role playing. And a lot of you guys are partnering in the groups, which is great. I've been looking at the activity. The activity we had in the last week was way higher than we've ever had in the last three months. And every week it's getting higher and higher. And I see that there are deals coming through. A few of you guys have even seen 
that I brought on a few guys as apprentices and actually gave you deals, right? I think David is a chiropractor or he's serving chiropractors as his niche. And we gave him eight to 10 chiropractors that are ready to buy right now. You put your stuff out there. We will give you those clients. It doesn't get any better than that. There's no strings either. So do that. And next week, we're going to talk about dollar a day. So now that you know your XYZ, your lighthouse, you've learned to role play, you have a menu, you have a clear process. Now you can start to spend some money so that you know that when you spend the money, it's going to result in leads. Those leads are then going to drive clients. You can spend dollar a day to drive more leads for your clients, which will then drive more referrals and just the system becomes a benevolent cycle. That's what you guys want. All right. I'm looking forward to seeing you guys in the group. Amen. Can I get a, a commitment from all? Give me a yes, a commitment that you're going to get an accountability group if you haven't already, and you're going to complete the exercises on your way to getting certified, right? If you yes. don't put in the effort and take this seriously, then you're not going to get serious results, right? You got to be all in on this one. And we're here. We've got the best team of agency people on the planet. You are lucky. You are in the right place right now. All right, everybody. Well, have a good weekend. Happy Friday. And you know, I'm watching you in the group, right? I'm seeing you. I'm watching all your posts. I look at every single post. Okay.